The role of a character in a story is one of the most crucial things to understand as you follow alongside their journey. Whether they are the MC, rival, or deuteragonist, woman lead, or love interest, and of course the antagonist are just some of the few terms a character can be labeled as. One thing that is never guaranteed to be permanent, however, is the role itself. Sometimes the rival could turn into an antagonist, or different side characters may take the spotlight as the MC. With My Hero Academia, I think for the most part it's been pretty clear the roles of our characters. Alongside Class 1A, we have the pros, with Endeavor and Hawks having the utmost importance in recent events, and of course All Might having a central connection to various characters and events throughout the story. However, who we are here to talk about today is none other than everyone's favorite raging porcupine, Katsuki Bakugo. A character that to me has gone through a very much needed transformation with his role within the story. A while ago, a discussion was started on what exactly is his position and role in the story, and the answers were quite divisive. However, I believe I have an answer that may just surprise you, but before that, we need to start from the very beginning and work our way through his entire journey to the current arc in the manga. Now just a heads up, if you are an anime only and not aware of the contents of the upcoming season, Season 6 and beyond, this video will have spoilers. I heavily advise treading carefully as I get closer to the Paranormal Liberation War arcs contents. Now before I get started with my usual ramblings, if you could, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on notifications for all future uploads. Our first introduction to Bakugo was probably as crude as it could have been, telling Deku he's practically trash and to take a swan dive off the roof. A statement that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, but it is what it is. He was a child that was born with a strong quirk, with it being explosion and had a good understanding of his quirk, the fundamental of it and of course how to fight with it. Pairing it alongside his aggressive attitude and solid battle prowess, Bakugo showed much potential with the means to become a great hero. Potential that not even Deku would disregard and as such he rose to the occasion to beat him back in season 1 during the 2 on 2 training matches. The result of these matches marks the beginning of what I call Bakugo's start line. To be defeated by somebody he deemed insignificant humbled him that day to at least come to the realization that Deku is in fact somebody in the same class as him and it won't change anytime soon. However, his relationship with Deku still needed some serious work. Nevertheless, it didn't stop him from making sure to do his best to stay on top as we take ourselves to the sports festival. Now, during this arc, it's not like Bakugo was specifically targeting anybody. Though, keeping an eye out for people like Deku and Todoroki, his main goal was to not only win the tournament, but for the final round to be met with a grand challenge. As we all know, Season 2 introduced the Todoroki family drama and also bringing us one of MHA's biggest episodes of Deku vs Todoroki. Unfortunately for Bakugo, however, his final match was not nearly as grand as Deku's, upsetting him as he wanted to equally have that grand challenge only to be met with a lackluster finish. Bakugo is regarded as the symbol of victory, and as a symbol seeking to win through the hardest of conflicts, on that day he was yet again met with a form of defeat. However, it was also a good showcase of his emotional eagerness to prove himself, which plays a part into events down the line. Moving along to the Saiyan arc, when the students get back together after their internships, we see another moment of Bakugo's animosity towards Deku continuing to build up when he sees Deku using full cowling, mimicking his movement. It was another showcase of Deku catching up, while Bakugo felt like he did not accomplish much directly with his time with Best Genus. However, what he did learn at the time was very important, but doesn't exactly show itself till much later. The end of Season 2 also brought on the final exams, in which Bakugo and Deku had to work together to get past All Might. Now, I think we all remember how this went at first, Bakugo being the most uncooperative human being on the planet, even going as far as to hit Deku and say he'd rather lose than to get his help. It took Deku to quite literally knock some sense into him in order to formulate a plan, but once again, showing that Bakugo needed to take a step down from the high horse and cooperate as even Deku is worth working with to achieve a goal. Slowly and steadily, through his moments of reckoning, Bakugo was realizing a lot more about himself and that he could not constantly keep thinking the same way he grew up doing so. For the longest time with MHA, we could never really understand a legitimate solid reason why Bakugo treated Deku so poorly. As childhood friends, what could possibly be the reason for such a dicey friendship? It wasn't until season 3 that we finally started to get some answers. Not saying what we got was substantial enough, but it did steer us in the direction to get more. Season 3 had three major stepping stone events for Bakugo that led to one of his biggest emotional moments yet. First, his kidnapping might put Hiroshima society on edge, then the fall of All Might that at first glance he blamed himself for, and lastly his failing of the Hero License exam stacked on top of him like a weight so heavy that eventually it needed to be addressed. That address came with the season 3 conclusion of Bakugo vs Deku round 2. For the first time we see Bakugo in a bad mental state and vulnerable. During this conversation he confided in Deku about his suspicions about One for All, but also just how all these events have affected him. Then to hear that the number one person he looked up to chose a quirkless kid who he thought nothing of as an obstacle to receive his power, well that was definitely the icing on the cake. The result of this fight, however, being the most positive outcome for the two's relationship as guided by All Might. If these two could learn to uplift, support, and grow with each other, then they could reach new heights than they have ever been able to before. This brings the idea of when to save and save to win. The end of season 3 is when I want to say Deku and Bakugo's relationship finally got both feet on the ground for a proper starting line. With the tension and feelings dealt with and the truth out, there was no reason for Bakugo to continue the same pattern of overly aggressive behavior. Of course, I don't expect Bakugo to stop being the raging porcupine he is, 
but at least now it wouldn't be so intense as before. Communication between the two characters started to get better, and it felt like the rivalry to become the greatest heroes they can be had truly begun. I use the term rivalry here because even with the extra quirks, Bakugo was able to keep up with Deku in his own way, at least for a while, and even then it didn't stop him from developing ways to get better. Joint training showed his new moves, and even him saving Jiro showing that safe to win mindset in action. Endeavor Agency even taking a step further with him tagging along to figure out what he cannot do. Can't forget to mention that even the moment with the kids in the remediation exam showed that he was reflecting on his own shortcomings and was striving to do better in an area outside of combat. Things however took a much more dramatic turn when we get to the Paranormal Liberation War arc and beyond. As we have seen time and time again, Deku is a reckless character. The lengths he will go to save one life has captured so many people emotionally as viewers and readers, but for Bakugo, it's a point of concern. Just like All Might, Deku can be very dangerous when left alone to his own tendencies. Villain Hunt was an entire arc dedicated to that very idea. Back in the Paranormal Liberation War arc, we saw some visible concern for Deku as he decided to take Shigaraki on his own. The blood spilled and the rage displayed by a childhood friend had him so worried he even committed the defining act for Deku's origin. His body moved on its own to save Deku from Shigaraki. Those chapters we saw Bakugo talking to All Might while Deku was training with his other quirks proves that he recognizes that Deku's tendencies are just as bad as All Might's and for him to do things alone is something he cannot allow. Yet Villain Hunt became that very basis and it can be argued that with that arc Deku entered a league of his own. This of course led to the question on whether or not Bakugo is considered a rival or not anymore and if not then what is his role as we head towards the end of My Hero Academia. His apology to Deku in chapter 322 was a huge milestone for his character, giving us the audience the most of an answer we have ever gotten as to why he was so mean to Deku growing up and even beyond. However that apology did not mean they will be on equal footing looking at the final battle of the series against Shigaraki. As it stands Bakugo does not have a final major villain fight in comparison to Todoroki or Ochiko. I'd argue his apology was also his greatest realization. In that moment he realized that he is not the superior person he wanted to be and his role is in fact to support Deku alongside class 1A for when he cannot bear it all by himself. For to save heroes is how you win as well, going back to the idea of save to win and also connecting to Ochiko's ideals of who saves the hero when they are in trouble. So knowing all of this and looking at the recent events in the manga, what is Katsuki Bakugo's role? My answer is that he's in the role of the late Sir Nidai. To explain, let's look at it like this. Nidai, just like Bakugo, cared for the one who rages for the sake of others. However, Nidai, even with knowing the future, was not able to keep up with All Might. He physically nor verbally was able to stop him. Yet Bakugo, being blessed with his quirk, has been able to keep up with Deku, and with the help of Class 1A, is able to walk alongside him. I believe Bakugo's current role in this story is in the position to fill the duty that late Sir Nidai could not. Where Sir Nidai failed for All Might, Bakugo will ensure that Deku, which we all know in the future is known as the greatest hero, will not be alone in the face of the greatest threats to society. He will support him the best way he can as a pillar, even if Deku is the wielder of a power that has more baggage beyond his own story. I don't think Bakugo needed a final villain, because looking at how Horikoshi handled his growth and journey of realization, what better way to represent that through supporting another character and standing not necessarily in the spotlight, but alongside his class and victory. That's pretty much it for me though. As always, thank you guys for watching and feel free to let me know all your thoughts about how you feel about Bakugo, his journey, and what his role in the story may be as we head towards the end of the series. Stay safe out there and I will catch you guys in the next video.